We've got uh, Pat Murphy on the line from Bucknuts 247 Sports to talk Ohio State football with the Buckeyes playing a big one against Indiana at the shoe. So I'm trying to weigh strategically this negative versus positive, meaning that Ohio State has struggled against the past. Uh, the, the conversations have been all over the place in regards to the Buckeyes' secondary play against a very capable Indiana receiving core. On the flip side, even though the names to me are impressive, Stevie Scott is the Big Ten active leader in rushing career. He's only averaging 3.6 yards per carry right now, and Samson James is at 3.2 yards per carry, and he was uh, one of Indiana's uh, rare four-star recruits and signees. Uh, so the Buckeyes should be able to clamp down on the run game and maybe even give more attention and help to pass defense because they're so stout against the run and Indiana has been pretty inept at uh, running the football. But again, they've got four or five receivers that uh, scare just about anybody. Absolutely. And, you know, it starts with uh, Ty Freifogel, who had a huge game last week against Michigan State. Uh, I believe he was the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. And, you know, I think that's going to be where this game is is potentially won or lost. Um, you know, the Indiana coaches were talking about the battle in the trenches, and, and obviously that's going to be big, and, and that's big in any game. But as you said, Ohio State secondary hasn't been as good as, you know, expected this season, um, you know, giving up over 224 yards per game through the air, um, ranked 51st in the country. So, you know, when – with with a group that that is young and inexperienced and you didn't have a normal off season, you didn't have the non-conference games to kind of get your feet wet. They've been thrown into the fire. Um, seven banks at, at cornerback, Sean Wade moving positions, uh, Marcus Williamson, who is a senior, but hasn't played a ton at that slot uh, cornerback position. And, and then the safeties uh, have been kind of a rotation between Josh Proctor and Marcus Hooker. And, and, you know, it's just been a work in progress. And this is easily going to be the biggest test uh, of the season for, for them. And, and you mentioned the receivers, Michael Penix Jr., already over 1,000 yards on the year, nine touchdowns to three interceptions. Um, I think what could be big for Ohio State is, is getting to Penix. And that's something I actually just wrote about the, you know, against Rutgers, they struggled two weeks ago to, to get to the quarterback um, and get sacks, get tackles for a loss. But the Buckeyes felt that they were able to disrupt the Rutgers quarterback still. And, and you know, while they got the ball out quickly and whatnot, it the, the pass rush still had an impact. So I think that's where you could see um, a big help to the secondary. And I do think the secondary needs to, needs to show it's growing up. You know, they've had now sort of a week and a half to prepare for this game with, with the game last weekend canceled. Um, you know, that's, that's plenty of time to figure out how you're going to, to handle this passing attack. Um, and they've had plenty of time to dial in. Obviously everyone was able to watch Indiana and Michigan state this past weekend and see what the Hoosiers can do in that department. So I think that's uh, that's going to be very interesting to watch this week is, is how Ohio state handles this passing attack of Indiana. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football discussion, debate and analysis every day. That's our mission. Uh, hit the bell for the notifications. Once you subscribe, because we go live every day, at least once a day. And uh, you know when we will go live. I got Pat Murphy on the line from Bucknuts talking Buckeyes and Hoosiers, the big team. Uh, basically, the way things shake out, uh, Michigan's out of the way, Penn State's out of the way, Maryland does just have the one loss. Uh, this almost turns into, man, the, the team that wins this game inside track to the Big Ten championship game. Pat and Maryland game last week. And if you had asked me a month ago, okay, discard the games that it wouldn't matter if Ohio state played Rutgers comes off the list first and then Maryland second, but the Terps come in with two really uh, impressive showings against Minnesota and against Penn state, of course. And, and not that I thought Ohio state was going to be seriously threatened, but I was interested to see those Maryland playmakers against Ohio state's defense. And I think it would have been an entertaining game. Absolutely. I, I We talked about it a little bit last week, just, you know, how, again, that Ohio State secondary, that would have been a, a good test to give us a better idea of, of what to expect coming into this game against Indiana's receivers. Um, you know, frankly, they haven't been tested a ton. And, and when they have, they haven't been great. So that would have been interesting. Um, obviously, just in general, I think with the eight game season in the Big Ten, you want to play every game you can. 
um, Ryan Day was asked if, if he saw many, uh, whether he saw pros or cons to not having a game this week. And he said, you know, it was mostly all cons, even though they did have some extra time to prepare for Indiana. You know, Indiana is still in the rhythm of a game week. And Ohio State tried to simulate that as much as possible. But there's nothing quite like uh, game reps that you, that you can do in practice, regardless how hard you go or, or anything like that. Um, so, you know, I know that the players were disappointed. Some of them talked about it today when they found out, you know, it was midweek last week, they'd already put in two good days of, of, or one good day and, and we're getting ready for the second of practice. And then all of a sudden things shifted. So, you know, this is, this is 2020 in a nutshell, right? Um, you know, you're, you're preparing for one team, you're halfway through the work week and, and then you find out that game's not happening and, and it's about shifting and adjusting and whatnot. So, you know, obviously Indiana's on a roll. They've, you know, I, I think it was 24 to zero against Michigan State last week. Um, we're able to keep in that rhythm, like I said, and, and Ohio State needs to come out and, and find that intensity and, and match what Indiana brings to the field after not playing last week. But the Buckeyes were definitely disappointed. You know, this is a team, as we've talked about plenty of times, you know, prior to the season that fought really hard to play and then has a game taken from them without, you know, them doing anything wrong so to speak um in, in terms of you know the number of cases ohio state wasn't the one that canceled the game so disappointed i think is is the major word there and you know i it wouldn't surprise me if they try and take some of that disappointment out on indiana now whether they're able to do it or not is is going to be the question but uh, i think you'll see an, an angry and frustrated ohio state team come out of the gates on saturday afternoon so is there any particular X factor key to this game, whether it be a player on either side of the ball, a unit, a matchup with the Hoosiers, anything that that you think is more so this particular game than it typically is? I think that one thing that could be key is, is how Ohio State establishes the run. Um, Indiana has been very good against the run, 18th best in the country, allowing 111 yards per game. Um, Ohio State, while rushing for over 200 yards per game, it just hasn't looked like we've come to expect Ohio State's rushing attack. And, and we've touched on this a little bit on here. Um, you know, no dominant runner like J.K. Dobbins or Ezekiel Elliott. And, you know, the offensive line hasn't opened big holes. They've been able to hit plays here or there, so the numbers look okay. Um, now, because of the passing attack and the way Justin Fields and these receivers are throwing the ball around, uh, you know, they haven't had to rush for a ton. And when they've gotten in close, for the most part, they've been able to score touchdowns on the ground. Um, but I think in a, in a game like this, you know, I, I'm thinking this is as close as you're going to see to, a, a, you know, classic Big Ten battle, especially if Michigan continues to struggle as they, they have this year when it comes to Ohio State. Um, you know, I, you need to be able to run. And, you know, it's, it's cold in Columbus right now. You know, we'll, we'll see what the weather's like come Saturday. But, you know, November in the Big Ten is is often about the rushing attack or stopping the run. So I think, uh, you know, Master Teague, Trey Sermon, the Buckeyes need to get this rushing attack going. Um, and I think if you can you can have some good runs and, and feel good about it coming out of this game with as good as Indiana has been against the run, then that sets you up going forward to to feel better about where your running backs and your offensive line when it comes to run blocking are. Master Teague at four and a half yards per carry, Trey Sermon at 4.8. That doesn't sound too bad, but if you check out the top teams in college football, look at the leading rushers, those numbers should be close to a yard, a full yard higher than that. It has to be taken into context, but still, it's not quite the productivity that we've seen and vintage Ohio State teams are able to produce. Pat Murphy on the line talking Ohio State football, the Buckeyes and the Hoosiers at the shoe. Big noon Eastern time kickoff, national TV audience, the whole deal, uh, and the inside track to the Big Ten Championship game in Indianapolis. Uh, Pat, we appreciate you stopping by. As always, enjoy the game. Absolutely. Thank you, too.